Welcome to the first lesson in this series about creating an endless runner game for mobile devices. In this episode, we're going to set up the tiles to create a level. Before we dive into the code, I'm just going to go through a couple of the key elements here in the scene. As you can see, we have four game objects we're going to use in this lesson. We got the blank one, a left tile, a middle tile and a right tile. This is going to make up the entire level. and the idea here is actually to avoid instantiate new objects during runtime. Instead, we want to create them at startup and only transfer them between the active tile here, the game layer, and the off-screen tile, which is called tiles. And as you can see, there's a couple of game objects here that can hold a different type of objects. In the game layer, we also have a tile called start tile position. It's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, the thing you can do here is just to set the position of your level. So it will start tiling from wherever you put this on screen. I've already connected the level creator here to the main camera so we can start scripting in that one. As you can see I have a couple of variables already predefined. I'm gonna explain them as we go through the code but as you, what you can see here is I have already map these three variables to the equivalent game objects on stage. So we got the game layer, the collected tiles, but we also got a background layer that we're going to address later. So first things first, we need to actually fill those game objects with tiles. So I'm just going to loop through this 20 time each and fill up the different types. So Let's start off by instantiate a couple of game objects. I'm gonna do just temp g1 and it needs to instantiate from the resource folder. So I'm just doing resources load. And we're gonna start off by loading the ground tile left. And it's a type of game object. To finish it off, we also need to typecast this into a game object. So we created an instance of this one, but we also need to change the parent to actually place it in the collected tiles. So I'm going to do temp1.transform.parent, and that one is going in the collected tiles G left. So collect the tiles and transform. Find child, since we need to find the G left. And as a parent, it needs to be a transform. Done. We just can do this for the other three as well. But since it's the same thing, I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. There we go. We got 20 object sheets of every tile we're gonna need and the thing we need to do now is just to place the collected tiles off center of the screen. So I'm just gonna do the transform dot position and we're gonna do a vector 2 and just make up a value big enough to, to actually put it outside of the screen. Yeah, this should be enough. And uh, we're just going to finish off by creating a reference to the current tile so we can keep track of, of where to place our next tile. That one is called tile pus and right now as a startup it's just going to be equivalent to the start tile position. So we're just going to find that one. There we go. And we're also going to keep track of the start Y position. And that will be the same as the Y.
So there you go. We have our tiles ready and we just now need to transfer them onto stage. For that, I created a function called set tile. As you can see, we have the parameter type. So we're just going to do a switch case here. And it's going to check the type. And case left. We're going to get the first child from the left container. So I'm just going to take the temp tile here and get the collected tile G left transform. I need to find a child. And it will be the G left dot transform dot get child. And since everyone in this holder is the same, we can just uh, get the first child. And of course, we need to do it as a game object. So that one is done, so we can break it. And we need to create this for the other three as well. So I'm just going to copy paste real quick and change to right, middle, and left, and blank. And it will be the G right. the G middle and the G blank. So we're now switching the parent as well to the game lay. So I'm going to do the same temp tile dot transform dot parent and it need to be the game layer dot transform we're just gonna also set the position here so i need to do transform position and this one is gonna go as a new vector two And the trick here is to actually position it, position it just uh, one tile's width from the previous position. So I'm going to get the previous position and I'm going to get the values from it. And then I'm going to add the width of one tile. And that just... That's what I set here to 1.25. So that's X. I'm going to do the same for Y. And it will be the startup position. And we're going to do the level height. Uh, height level. And that one will be zero until we address it in the next tutorial. But since white width and height is the same, we can go with tile width again. And we need to add this one as a zero. Oh, sorry, I already had that one added in there. There you go. To finish it off, we're just going to set the tile position here to the new one, and the function is ready. All we now have to do is to fill the scene. So I'm just going to do a for loop here, 
and fill the scene up with a couple of middle tiles since we already have the start left. I'm just gonna fill it up 15, 14 times here. Oops, sorry. And all we need to do is set tile and send in middle. And then we can finish it off by set red right tile. Done. So just finish off by setting fill scene and we should be good to go. So, oh, I'm gonna change one thing here. Of course I need to do the equal sign there. And I'm gonna press start, voila. As you can see, we got our start tile 14 middle tiles and then the right tile. So in the next series, we're going to show you how to generate new tiles and also change the height and get some speed into the scene.